Hello there. This is a video about oils and how they can go off and become rancid. Uh, so that is through the process of lipid oxidation or lipolysis where the molecule can break down, for example. Uh, and there's also polymerization. We're not going to talk about polymerization, but that's actually not the breaking down as such. That's the build up of oils where they form complex bonds. Uh, for example, I bought walnut oil to season my cast iron pans. I was disappointed, however, to find that before using that walnut oil on my pans, they smelled off. I could smell those volatile off uh, flavors that comes from oxidation um, and walnut oil is supposed to be one of the more stable oils that was disappointing uh, the reason I've uh, I'm really interested in this topic is for our own personal health but for the health of our consumers as well if we're working in industries using oil for food or for food supplements um, and hydrolysis hydrolysis is the breakdown let's take a look at hydrolysis it's the breakdown of the fats from the esterified fats it breaks down to give us the free fatty acids in the oil uh, and that's triggered through time, obviously, but heat and moisture in particular will accelerate that breakdown to give us free fatty acids. Oxidation is where um, the oils oxidize uh, to form free radicals, aldehydes. The volatile compounds are the ones that we can smell. We can smell uh, if oil is broken down through hydrolysis as well, um, but the volatile compounds is typically that rancid smell um, and also triggered by heat, Pro-oxidants, some metals also, they are pro-oxidants, they trigger oxidation. Uh, enzymes through the digestive process, we can break down fats, that's lipolysis, of course. Um, and light also, which is why storing oil in a darker bottle is a good idea. Uh, and moisture also triggers oxidation. The thing is, if you've got hydrolysis and higher levels of free fatty acids in the oil, those fatty acids also trigger oxidation. So it's kind of a continuous, never-ending cycle of the oil going bad over time. And we accelerate it through processing oils and using heat processes and allowing moisture in the oil or cooking high moisture content foods like fries, etc. So that's hydrolysis and oxidation causing rancidity. Saturated fat you will find are generally more stable. Things like solid fats uh, and things like coconut oil can stay pretty stable for a long period of time. The more uh, double bonds, um, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated has even more double bonds. Then the more liquid the oil, the more prone they are to hydrolysis and oxidation. So testing, I bought myself uh, these free fatty acid test strips, uh, but primarily I've always relied on my nose to smell those off oils, uh, particularly food supplements, oh, Omegas, etc. Whenever I buy them, I'll cut them open first before I take them and I'll taste and I'll smell them because you can, you can do that. Some people have more sensitive noses and taste for rancidity, some not so much. That is subjective, of course, but in uh, industries like the nut industry, despite all the various test methods available that we'll go through on this particular slide, despite that, they still primarily use the sensors for smell in particular to detect rancid nuts, because if you've got the nose for it, it is in fact one of the most sensitive methods uh, of detecting rancidity. Uh, so taste and smell come first, but I wanted to buy this for myself for home use, and I've seen them used when I audit, when I consult, et cetera, and uh, uh, I've, I've seen them used in industry as well. Really, really useful because it's super easy and they just test strips. If you, you just pop it in the oil, if it stays blue, it's pretty good. If it's gone green, it's bad. Um, and I tested the olive oil that I had in my home. I bought fresh olive oil. I bought a number of different bottles, different brands, and they were all slightly rancid. In fact, if you do a bit of research on this, it's very, very hard to find olive oil that is not slightly rancid. And as I say, it is because of the various uh, processing methods and uh, levels of stability of different types of oil. Those are the free fatty acid test strips here. Yeah, an interesting thing, you can only use in below 40 degrees, and I've seen it used in industry, frying foods uh, that, that are then sold frozen. Uh, and that pre-frying process, they test the oil and they take a sample of the hot oil and they put the strip in the hot oil. It's not appropriate. It's not what, it, what these are designed to do. Um, so I've got to let that oil cool before using that. What these test strips are looking for is in fact an acid value. And the color in the strip will change based on the acid value, which changes through the level of breakdown. Um, 
And you can send a sample to a lab as well to test for free fatty acids. And the lab will use gas chromatography rather than a simple test strip. So that is more likely to be more accurate. Uh, but ultimately, we're detecting free fatty acids, which we know comes primarily through hydrolysis of the oil. Peroxide value, you can buy a meter of photometer to test for peroxide value. And peroxide comes from the oxidation process. And I've got some limits there for you as well to look out for. But again, notice how the free fatty acids are primarily looking for hydrolysis. Uh, peroxide value is primarily uh, detecting one element that comes from oxidation, right? The more oxidation, uh, the worse the peroxide value. But a nice combination would be this total oxidation test, or TOTOX, they call it. Uh, we're looking for both. That's the best way in industry, is to ideally look for both of those values to get a total picture of the oil quality. Uh, we can also buy a test meter. There's a great article by Clip Springer on measuring total polar materials or total polar molecules uh, or total polar, total polar compounds. It's a meter that you can use on oils at temperatures higher than 40 degrees C. So that's really useful and probably a good way to check the oil quality in industry. There's some values there for you as well. Uh, of course, you can, again, send samples off to labs. They've got other test methods available to them, such as gas chromatography for those volatile aldehydes. Uh, sometimes you can look for the compounds, those aldehydes that are produced. These are the ones that you can smell as well, uh, such as hexanol uh, and in the nut industry. The head, they'll take the head space of the packed nuts and look for that hexanol as an indicator of the fat breakdown in the nuts. So that's a useful test. Uh, there are other tests as well, more used in other industries, such as the fuel industry, uh, oils for diesel, etc., where they can use electron spin resonance and things like that. But in the food industry, it's primarily going to be total oxidation. That's a good way to go uh, and or total polar materials to look out for. I really hope that's been useful. Let's take care of ourselves and our consumers as well. Don't forget to particularly risk assess these hazards in your HACCP or your food safety plan so that we can make sure that our control measures are effective, again, to protect ourselves and our consumers. Mm -hmm.